and I was still, it was still natural. And I didn't know this at the time, but that like kicks, like starts like contractions right away and intense contractions. Cause it's like doing it for you. So things got pretty intense, like super fast. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back for part two of my interview with Kara Swanson. I'm so excited for this. You can feel her excitement come through the screen. If you guys missed part one, I highly recommend you go back and watch that one first. She talks all about her VBAC after two C-sections, had many doctors tell her no. She did her research. So the last episode, she talks a little bit more about the journey to getting to this point. And today she's gonna talk all about the successful VBAC she had and you can just feel her excitement. And for anyone that is just feeling discouraged, like they want to stand up for themselves, watch this interview. She knew what she wanted and she stood firm in that and it was just really awesome to see. So check it out. Here's part two. You said the doctor, the doctor you had prior had dropped you because you wanted a VBAC after two C-sections and also because you weren't going to drink the glucola. So I thought this was so interesting how you talk about it on your Instagram. Can you explain a little bit about what glucola is for those of us that don't know and kind of your story with that? So glucola is the drink that you take um, to see if you have, what is it called? The diabetes. What is it called when the gestational <laughs> diabetes. There we go. <laughs> so you take it, it's, you know, it's supposed to see different levels. They take your blood work after, and it's just a lot of toxins, a lot of dyes, um, and things that I don't personally drink or want, you know, not pregnant. And then I really don't want it, you know, with my baby inside me, I didn't know really about that with my first. And then with my second, I, I could drink the orange, like orange juice. And then with my third, I probably could have done the orange juice. I just thought jelly beans sounded more fun. <laughs> so, so I, you know, was, was saying like, you know, I wanted an alternative, um, to the glucola and that doctor was like, no, we won't do that. But my doctor in Iowa city was like, yeah, that's completely fine. That's not a big deal. Really what you have to do is, and I don't know the exact like grams or anything, but you, you want a certain amount of sugar in a certain amount of time, whatever the glucola is, whether it's 50 grams of sugar, then you have to eat 50 grams of either the orange juice or um, the jelly beans. So I just brought the bag of jelly beans. They asked me to just to bring the bag of jelly beans. They counted them out for me, gave them to me. And that was, that was my test, how I did it. So let's go to then kind of like your, your birth story a little bit. Um, so you had the successful VBAC and I'm mm -hmm. sure it was just like an amazing moment for you. So just like, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what that was like and um, how it all went down. It really was like just so magical and just a, literally a dream come true because I, I mean, for seven years, like I wanted this, you know, and so it was just the best experience. So the cool thing about my doctor too is, which a lot of times they won't um, induce for a VBAC, um, especially VBAC after two, but this doctor and this hospital would um, induce, which is really awesome um, because I wasn't progressing much and they could only do two things though. They can only give me some Pitocin and a cook catheter um, to help dilate. So that was encouraging. I went in to be induced um, at 6 a.m. and it and we had to wake up super early because it was a two hour drive, but it was <laughs> still worth it. Um, so I was in labor for a long time. Um, I wanted to go natural because I was trying to do everything that I could to make my VBAC successful. And I had read that sometimes, you know, getting an epidural could slow things down. And so I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go natural just so I could have everything lined up, you know, to have the perfect birth story. So I got Pitocin. They started me on a very low dose, some contractions, and then they decided to go ahead and put the cook catheter in. And that is like the catheter, but it has like a balloon and it, it gets bigger and then it dilates you. So it manually dilates you to a five or a six. And then it comes out because it's, it lost grip or whatever on you. And so we decided to go ahead and do that. And I was still, it was still natural. And I didn't know this at the time, but that like kicks, like starts like contractions right away and intense contractions. Cause it's like doing it for you. So things got pretty intense, like super fast. We decided to go into the tub and I was laboring and I thought, I, was, I mean, it was so incredibly painful and my contractions were like 10 to 15 seconds apart. So I like never really got a break. Um, and I was just having a hard time even like breathing, but I was trying my best to like 
breathe through them and moan through them. But my husband, we kind of joke now, but he says I was screaming through them. And at one point I did look over at him and he was had his like hands over his ears, like, cause I was so loud and I was like, so exhausted. Like I couldn't even do anything. You know what I mean? I'm like, we'll chat about that later. No, we <laughs> laugh about it. It's fine. The nurse was never like pressuring, but she was just like, I really think you'd benefit from an epidural. And my fear was just that I, it would slow labor down and that, you know, I wouldn't have a successful VBAC. Um, and my husband was like, Kara, I really think that, you know, you should. And I was like, let's just wait a little bit longer. Let's just wait. And then they were like, okay, let's go labor by the bed on a medicine ball. As soon as I got out of the tub, like it got even worse. Like I couldn't even like stand. So they like, you know, kind of like carried me to over. And I was just like, I can't even, I couldn't even catch my breath because the contractions were so on top of each other. And I was just like, let's just like, let's do it. Like with tears running down my face, I'm like, let's just get the epidural. If this lasts another hour, like I think like I'm going to die from like these contractions. The doctor came in and checked me after I got the epidural and I had it dilated. Like any. And I was like, that was like five, six hours of like hardcore labor. And so that is where a lot of the fears like came in and a lot of like just mind games, you know, during that time, because I was like, Oh my word, maybe my body is broken. Like maybe I can't, maybe I can't do this a little while later. Oh, they put in the cook catheter. Um, I dilated and then I was at a five or a six when they checked me, which was awesome. And the baby's head was sitting low. I was 90% effaced. And so that was when like all the happy tears like came. I cried so much during like this whole process. So that was like so encouraging and exciting because I felt like, okay, like this, this is going to happen. And then they broke my water and I reached down kind of over my pubic bone and I realized there was like a bump and I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's the head, like baby is coming down. And so I called the doctor in, she checked me and she was like, like, it's time to push. And I was like, wait, like, I was literally like, what? Like, we're doing this? And she was like, yeah, we're doing this. So that was like, so exciting to be like, okay, we're here. But like literally in the back of my mind this whole time, it was like, but what if they tell me to stop? They told me, they said, because they were kind of treating me like a first time, like mom, like having, you know, a natural birth. Um, they said it could take up to two hours. And I think it took like 20 minutes maybe. Cause like, I was just like, we're doing this. So yeah. And then I remember at one point they said, okay, the head is like there. Like, do you want to feel the head? And I'm like, heck yeah, I do. So I got to like reach down and feel the top. And I was just like, oh, okay, like a couple more pushes. And then we didn't know, we didn't find out if we were having a boy or a girl. Um, so it was kind of like a big moment. One more, you know, hard push and he came out and it was a boy, which is super exciting because we had two girls. So yeah, it was just, it truly was magical and just such a surreal moment. So for anyone that's watching and they are either, you know, a first time mom afraid to kind of stand up or really know they really want something for their birth, but you know, we're kind of, you know, in the place where they're like, I don't know if I should say something. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them to encourage them to stand up for themselves? One, like I had said, like find a doctor who is 100% supportive. And if you can't find that doctor, you know, you've looked, you've met, you know, with different doctors, um, I would just be okay to like push back and stand up and do your own research, you know, like with the whole glucola thing, that was something that I felt like strongly about. And I knew that there were other options. And that's the thing, know what your options are. Just like with maybe them trying to bully you into having another C-section, do the research, look and see what the percentage is that that actually happens. What are signs, you know, that it could happen, you know, and then talk to your doctor about that and say like, this is what I found can we work on this together? You know, can this be like a partnership, but don't be afraid. You know, doctors are very smart, but sometimes they're just so by the book that they don't think outside. And so don't be afraid to just suggest things and, and stick to what you, your gut and what you feel, you know, is good for both you and baby. And I think hearing your story alone will just help so many more moms like speak up for themselves mm -hmm. too, because it shows like, you knew what you wanted, you did the research, you found your doctor, and then you had this amazing moment where mm -hmm. like, everything you dreamed about happened. So yeah, you know, obviously my, my fear was to 
like having the actual another C-section again. But in my mind, I was like, you know what, if I do everything in my, that I know in my power to have this be back and still end up with a C-section, I will still, it would be obviously hard, but I would still feel good about knowing that I did everything that I could. Mm -hmm. you know, that I knew in my power, I found the right doctor. I stood up for what, you know, I wanted and what, you know, was best for us. So yeah, just encouraging people that even if you don't get that your birth story that you want, at least you did everything. And there's no, like, there's no regret. So I always like to end my interviews with, I call them like fun thinking questions, kind of gets perspective of each mom I interview. So my first question is if you could have a billboard made today, or you could share one tip with moms everywhere, what would you have it say? So I like this one. So I did motherhood is both hard and beautiful. And I, what I mean by that is you can still be sleep deprived and want your child to sleep. And you know, it's hard. It is so hard, especially those newborn stages, but then you can also have joy and be so grateful. And it, it there's, it's so beautiful. And I think sometimes we feel like bad or guilty when we're like, I just want this season to end and it's okay to think that, but also find the beauty in it as well. Mm -hmm. I love that. And that's awesome. And what is a quote that you either live by or think of often that either helps you with parenting or just kind of life in general? You know what? I didn't like, I honestly don't have a quote. <laughs> and I didn't totally even, okay. No, I was looking through these and I was like, oh, I need to like go find a quote. But you know what? I'm just going to be honest. I don't yeah. have a quote. I'm not one of those quote people. So that's, no, that's, <laughs> no, that's fine because that shows, that shows you. Yeah. I mean, I could fun. probably have found one ahead of time, but I'm just no. going to be real. <laughs> no, I think that's, no, that's awesome. So, yeah. and then I know you kind of talked a little bit about, um, you know, you do gluten-free nutrition and uh, mm -hmm. you have a really awesome awesome page. So can you talk a little bit uh, briefly about that and then where everyone can find you on social? So I'm a nutritionist. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients and I just have a passion to make nutrition just simple, easy, and delicious. Sometimes we, you know, we overcomplicate it. And so I just want to make it simple and, you know, available to everyone and just go back to the basics. I do coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have meal plans that are gluten-free, mostly dairy-free just to make that easy for people, you know, to, to change their nutrition. I do different challenges and things like that too. But yeah, I share a ton of nutrition tips um, and recipes and on um, Instagram. My handle is at Kara Swanson. Um, and then my blogs and all the recipes too are on um, lifewelllive.fitness. Awesome. I'll go ahead and I'll link those at the bottom as well so everyone can take a look at yeah. that. So there's a common theme that we see a lot in our mom talk interviews and that's do the research and know you have other options and stand up for yourself. And I think Kara just emulated that perfectly. She did the research. She knew that what one doctor said wasn't the only way to go. So she did her research. She knew she had other options. And I just think it was such an empowering episode. So thanks for tuning in, guys. And thank you, Kara, for being here. Definitely check out Kara at Kara Swanson on Instagram. And you can check out her website as well, Life Well Lived, and she's got some awesome recipes and tips there as well. So thanks guys for tuning in and have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Mom Talks with Krista. If you're not yet subscribed, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. It should be down here somewhere. We release new episodes every single Wednesday. And if you're not following us yet, be sure to follow us at Mommy Knows Best on Instagram. And remember, if you're watching this and doubting yourself, you are a great mom. So thanks so much for watching and we will see you next week.